thank you very much for that introduction, Emma. What I love about really detailed bios and introductions like that is, A, they're suitably embarrassed. I don't know if I should smile or just sort of grimace throughout the whole thing. But also, it means hopefully I don't have to talk too much about myself, but rather what's up in my head instead. Um, so I spent the last couple of weeks thinking about what I should talk about to you this evening. I thought about it when I was at work, when I was having breakfast, um, when I went for a run, which only happened once. And I kept thinking, and in all these different environments, because I just couldn't come up with anything. And I went to bed last night, still a little bit like, I just don't know. And it sort of worried me throughout the entire three week period because I was like, Maybe I'm not innovative, maybe I'm not creative, maybe I'm not all those awesome words that get associated with people who have these big ideas that are amazing. Um, fortunately, I have some great friends who, some of uh, in the audience, who reminded me A, that I was slightly stupid for thinking that, but also that's not the case. I've had good ideas that I've actually implemented in the past from my Change a Million Light Bulbs campaign to my Speak Your Mind initiative, different things that I was running and doing. As my friends reminded me of this, it occurred to me that the reason why I couldn't think of an idea was that those things that they said were good ideas previously were no longer ideas in many ways. They were tangible things. When people asked me, what are you working on now? I referred to those. I referred people to policy outcomes that had happened, the amount of people that I'd worked with before, or a website that I was running, different pieces that I'd had published, etc. It wasn't some sort of abstract thing that I was like, oh, well, you know, like I'm thinking this, this, and this. And that was when I realized that Ideas are only ideas if you've sort of embraced it, you've created some action on it, and it's led to some sort of outcome, whether it was the one that you wanted or the one that you didn't want. Ideas and thoughts are not the same thing, but we often use the word to mean the same thing. And I know that we're thinking all the time, we're always thinking, and I'm sure some of you in the audience are going, this is the first speaker, that's her big idea, I, I hope those guys can do bigger. Um, but it's true. So. We're thinking all the time, and the reason why thoughts are not ideas is because have you ever sat in front of the TV before and, you know, your new TV show is doing something or a new product is marketing in a new way, and you think to yourself and you say to someone, hey, that was my idea, they stole that. Well, I really do hate to break it to you, but it wasn't your idea, it was a thought that you had, and the person who ever implemented it, they had that idea and they decided to run with it. That's what differentiates a thought and idea in my mind. Um, and I guess thoughts and ideas are really different things, and it takes some sort of process to get from a thought to an idea. And I thought about what that was, and for me, it's the ability to fully embrace a thought, to actually believe in it, to have that commitment, to have that conviction. Ideas can only really be successful, no matter what the idea is, if you believe in it. Because if you don't believe in it, how are you going to convince other people that it's not only a big idea, but that it's a good idea, that it's a great idea, that it's an idea that's worth implementing? Um, and then, obviously, that leads to the question of, well, which of my thoughts do I pick from? I have thoughts all the time, from what I should have for breakfast to what I should be doing to change the world. These are pretty big decisions that I have to make. And the breakfast one is actually a serious issue. I had wheat bix this morning, six. It was great. Um, I'm also a big eater. Uh, but what makes an idea worth implementing, for me anyway, is that whether or not it's truly innovative. And to think about what's innovative and to get labelled as someone who's innovative is a really big compliment. And I realised that all of the ideas that I'd ever implemented, that I'd taken from that thought to an idea to something that actually led to an outcome, they, were, they had two things working for them. One was time. I let them incubate. I let them grow over time. I let them work through, I guess, the process that is natural with idea formation. But also, I diversified. I didn't just speak to myself about it, which I sometimes do. I didn't just speak to people who I knew. But I also spoke to people outside of that. Because when we just associate with people who are our friends, which are obviously great, we don't want to be with haters, is that... Um, <laughs> We get to that point where we're in a bubble and we have expectations set on us. And all I really wanted to do was spend a whole year thinking. So I thought about that a little bit, the idea of thinking, yes, I know. Um, and I thought about it until it became sort of an idea that I would take a sabbatical, that I would take all of this year essentially off, think about, you know, things, let these ideas grow in my mind, these thoughts rather grow into ideas in my mind. And it struck me because Henry Ford once said that thinking is some of the hardest work you'll ever do and that's why so few people do it. I could have easily just taken up any one of my options. I could have followed 
um, what people thought I was going to do, fell into those expectations. But instead, um, I decided to take a year off. I told people about it, people I know, such as my mum. She thinks that I'm actually just unemployed at the moment. I convinced her that I'm not, really. Um, some of my friends thought that I was just going to bum around and travel for the year. But no, I'm actually solidifying this year. I'm thinking about where to next. I'm deciding what I want for my future. Um, and I know that doesn't sound like a, a big idea in any sense, um, but for me it was. It was a huge idea. I told people who I care about and talk to every day about it. I told people who I didn't know about it at a TEDx event. Um, that was scary and probably I regret it a little bit because every time I think about reneging, it's up on YouTube and people are like, oh, but you say you're going to do it. And this is what the process looks like right now, that I'm at about four months in, um, after coming back from Africa, of just thinking and thinking about where to next. Now, I know what I just shared with you wasn't necessarily big, but sometimes big in the hyperbole that surrounds big ideas and concepts that, you know, great thinkers think about, philosophers and the like, they sometimes just distract you from the... Th Sorry, distract you from how they're not actually ideas, but they're simply thoughts. They're things that people are talking about, but not necessarily doing, and that's not how I choose to live and embrace my life. Deep thought should be a precondition of any good idea. It doesn't matter how hard you're going to have to work your brain or how you're going to have to go out of your comfort zone to get there. And I hate to break it to you, because thinking's hard, and it's just something that we need to be doing more of in order to actually get these big ideas. Thank you.